Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's great to see you all and uh, we welcome you as uh, you join us to worship this morning. And if you're listening in on live stream or KWFR 101.9 The Fire, we also welcome you as well. Uh, we're glad to have several uh, mediums that you can join us by for this service, especially um, uh, if, if you're not able to attend in person. Uh, many folks have told me they've listened on the radio. They don't have the means to do the live stream, but many listen in on the radio, and so we're grateful that uh, we have that relationship and have that ongoing program. Uh, just a couple of announcements I'll, I'll print uh, or, or highlight on the back of your bulletin. Uh, if you haven't gotten the bulletin, they're, they're available in the, the entryways. Uh, and uh, on the back is usually a list of upcoming announcements, and, and there's a long list, and I'll just highlight a couple. Sandy Peterson told us this morning she still needs a few spots for Meals for the Elderly. Um, if you could sign up, her contact information, email, and phone number are on the bulletin. If you're listening at home, you can click on the bulletin online, uh, um, and uh, we would love for you to find that out. Uh, but we, we do need a few spots filled. I'm going to be driving on Fridays one of the routes, and I hope you'll consider it. It's contactless. You, uh, you uh, hang the bag of, with the food on their door and ring the doorbell and step back and wait till them, they come and get it. So that, that's a, it, you don't have to deliver it into someone's house, and I hope you'll consider that. It's our month to deliver uh, meals. Also, you'll notice the very first entry there is if you know someone from our church that's in college, uh, we're a little late getting this posted. Our dear friend Tim Hall has had uh, you know, surgery and things, and he usually uh, organizes that. Uh, but this year, unable to do that, and so some of the other committee members have stepped up, and we, uh, we have that scholarship application online. Now, uh, they have to be in by Friday, October 2nd. So uh, please get those in. We'd love to consider your college student uh, for a scholarship. Um, also, uh, you'll see down, uh, further down, uh, an introduction about our new youth director. She'll be starting this week. Her name is Randy Lanham. She moved here from Houston uh, uh, last night, and uh, it's the first time she's ever moved away. And so uh, I hope when you get a chance, you'll welcome uh, Randy Lanham and we've had many good youth directors over the years but this is the first time that I think in a long 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 time we've had a full-time youth director so uh, really excited about uh, about that opportunity and I hope you'll you'll greet her when you have the opportunity to meet meet her there's other announcements there if you'll look those over uh, and please take it home with you uh, we don't, uh, we have not been greeting because of COVID, but if, as you stand for the call to worship, will you wave at somebody, you know, give them some jazz hands or something like that. So let's stand for our call to worship and Karen will come lead us. Please join me in the call to worship. If it had not been God who was on our side, the troubles of our world would have swallowed us whole. If it had not been God who was on our side, the sorrows of our times would have swept us away. Are any among us suffering? Come and pray. Are any among us cheerful? Come sing songs of praise. Are any among us sick? Come and ask for healing. Our help is in our God, the one who made heaven and earth. Call upon God, creator and rescuer. God is on our side. Please remain standing as you're able for our first hymn of praise, page 375. There is a balm in Gilead. Oh 
may be seated. Before we have our confession and pardon, let's share any joys or concerns uh, that we want to lift up today and let us respond to those concerns. Lord, hear our prayer. And to any thanksgivings, let us say thanks be to God. I know we want to lift up the family of Meredith Lewis. Uh, her parents uh, were longtime active members and, and she grew up in this congregation and Meredith passed away this week. Uh, I don't think any services are pending, but we'll let you know when we, we hear something if there are, is a service that's scheduled. So for Meredith Lewis, Lord, hear our prayers. Uh, continued prayers for the Wegner family. Uh, Ronnie and Billy's father passed away a week ago. And we want to lift up the Wegners. Lord, hear our prayers. Yes, Bishop. Let me come a little closer so I can hear you. Oh, yeah, the, uh, the Black Panther actor that passed away. Lord, hear our prayers. Um, I really do have hearing problems. Don't tell my wife I admitted to that, but... Oh, she's in the back. She heard it. Sorry. Uh, baby Sayla on Wednesday will be having her first birthday. So let's say thanks be to God or happy birthday, right? Sayla, Sayla, Sayla. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Sayla. Happy birthday to you. I got a smile. I got a smile. Gosh, if it wasn't for COVID, I'd go over there and pick her up, you know. But, oh my gosh. Uh, other joys or concerns that you'd lift up? Laurel? Prayers for rain. Lord, hear our prayers. Others. Our country. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us uh, take a moment. We're going to go uh, to the confession and pardon. Um, I know you don't have your hymnals in front of you, but uh, perhaps you uh, will... Um, Now, remember the, the words to this, and I would just uh, invite you when I get to the prayer of confession that you would uh, join me. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If you'll pray in silence and confess your sins to God. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward you. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Karen, would you lead us in the scripture? Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Lord, 
Open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit that what we hear in your word today may shape us more and more into the very likeness of our Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray, amen. Our first reading is from James. It's uh, chapter 5, verses 7 through 20. Be patient, beloved, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits for the precious crop from the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and late rains. You also must be patient. Strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. Beloved, do not grumble against one another so that you may not be judged. See, the judge is standing at the doors. As an example of suffering and patience, beloved, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Indeed, we call blessed those who showed endurance. You've heard of the endurance of Job, and you've seen the purpose of the Lord, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. Above all, my beloved, do not swear, either by heaven or by earth or by any other oath, but let your yes be yes and your no be no, so that you may not fall under condemnation. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of joy. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and when he prayed fervently that it might not rain, and for three years and six months it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if anyone among you wanders from the truth, and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. The word of God. Thanks be to God. If you'll please stand with us for our next hymn, Lamb of God. Christ, 
you'll remain standing for our second scripture reading that comes from Romans chapter 8, beginning at verse uh, 22, Romans 8, 22. We know that the whole creation has been groaning, as in the pains of childbirth, right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for the adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. This is the Word of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. So we're uh, talking this morning about patience, and uh, I really had a revelation this week. Um, my mom always had a, 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 a little sign on the wall that said, Lord, give me patience, but give it to me quick, right? And, and I've always loved that sign, but this week I probably realized, oh my gosh, she was praying because of me. You know, and, and uh, that's why she needed patience, you know. My siblings probably had something else to do with that, but I know I, I've probably given my mom a, a few gray hairs, you know. Someone else said, Dear Lord, please Beth, bless me with patience. Not opportunities to learn to be patient. I've had too many of those. Anybody relate to that, right? Someone else said, my patience is wearing thin, and by thin, I mean you are one smart comment away from being slapped so, so far away that even Google can't find you. Patience is what you have when there are witnesses. Nobody laughed at that at the 830 service, but you, you'll get it in a few minutes, right? I saw a meme made with a, a, a froghorn leghorn. Did, did anybody remember froghorn leghorn, right? Uh, or did, those kids are going to have to Google that. But it was a meme including the cartoon character froghorn leghorn telling, uh, I think it's Sylvester the cat, and he said, boy, oh boy, uh, you are about to exceed the limitations of my medication. <laughs> and last but not least, my, the, the, at least the... The, the saying about patience that I identified with, I wish I was as thin as my patience. Anybody? Anybody? Right. So patience. In this fifth chapter of James, James gets to the heart of the matter there in verse 7, and he speaks about patience. Brothers and sisters, be patient. And at first we'll hear when we hear that about we should have a life of patience. But we might miss a phrase that he couples with that. Be patient until the Lord's coming. It's what I just finished in the Romans verse. It said, but if we hope for what we do not yet have, but we wait for it patiently. We wait patiently for the Lord's coming. And then James gives us a, an illustration about that, and he talks about a farmer. And he said, a farmer um, waits, like, waits on the rain, and a farmer waits on the harvest, and he waits for his crops to yield. And, and, and he gives us this great illustration about, about farming. And, and who in Texas right now hasn't learned really in this, this drought to be patient for the rain? In fact, I was reading or listening to Karen read a moment ago about there, there's even in that last part of the text about uh, that someone had prayed for no rain to happen and it didn't rain for, what, three and a half years. And, and I was getting ready to shout, if you're praying for no rain to happen, stop. Because the rest of us are patiently waiting on rain. You need to change your prayer life, right, you know? And join the rest of us. And so we know a little bit about waiting for the rain. Farmers, though, are much patient for, for so much more. 
they know when to till the ground and when to plant. And then they wait for, for it to grow so they can harvest it. They don't plant one day and then the next day go out there and disc it up. They don't go plant one day and the next day go out and expect to be this rich harvest that corn is eight feet high. They wait and they pray and they hope that in the, the, between the planting and the harvest that the right amount of rains come and the right amount of sunlight and we don't get hail or bugs or whatever you know else they, 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 they want, you need during that period. And so that's a great lesson for us to be patient like farmers. But we, we don't want to miss that phrase, to be patient until the Lord comes. Because then that whole message about farming is quite even different. Because we become then in the story the crops. And we're waiting for the Lord to harvest. And we don't know that hour. We don't know when that will come. In my last congregation, uh, when I moved there, there was a, a woman named Grace Delger who just died a few months ago at the age of 103. She, though, was in her 90s when I first met her and approaching quickly uh, her late 90s. In fact, she was, uh, you know, uh, 99 when I moved over here, right? Or, or, or pretty close to, to 100. And... and um, Every time I would see Grace, she was such a precious woman. She, she was only about this high. She sang in the choir for 60 years. You know, she was just this faithful woman. But every time I would see her, it, she would say something like, I don't know why the Lord is leaving me here. I don't know what my purpose is. Why at 96 or 97 or 98 or why at 99 the Lord has continued to leave me here. Yet I remind her every time I said, Lord, you are such a great inspiration to everyone. You write cards to people. You pray for people. You encourage people. You have a purpose. The only time I really got worried was one day when I happened to get behind her driving and I saw how she was driving. And I was like, Lord convince her to stop driving you know you know if she she's waiting to hear from you and it needs to be a message about driving you know sweet precious lady but she was waiting waiting on the harvest like a farmer waits on his crop we know about everyday patient life we're patients with our children or, or we need to learn patience I think my mom had to learn that right Patience maybe with our employees if you're an employer. Or if you're an employee, patience with your boss, right? My new thing that I need patience for, you've heard me about, say, talk about this before, but I've always had trouble with people who won't get out of the left lane, especially on the highway, right? You've heard me talk about that. I don't, I don't say anything to them, and I drive past them. Uh, I, Laurel does hear about it in the passenger seat, but, you know, uh, but, but, but that's been my pet peeve for a long time. But in COVID, we haven't been driving a lot, so I haven't had that problem, right? My new pet peeve where I don't have patience is when you're spacing out to enter the grocery store and the person going in ahead of you and you're trying to keep the space and you're, 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 you know, they're slowing down or whatever and you're trying, trying to keep the space and then they get right to the door and for some reason they stop. Maybe they talk to the the head counter person now how you doing today and I'm thinking I'm glad you're nice but enter the store you know and then they enter the store well, they got to get a basket then and they enter the store and and if this is you I'm sorry but it's just I'm explaining my then you got to get one of those wipey things and wipe off the handle and then you got to get a wipey thing because now you got to wipe your hands and then you stop at the tomatoes, and, and I'm back here going, Lord, give me patience, and Lord, give it to me quick, right? Anybody? Am I the only one? I'm the only one? I'm the, I, really, you know, anybody? Okay, right. It's worse at neighborhood market because they got these little things that even stop you, you know. I'm like, because you can't even get around them because they got these gates, you know, and 
Okay, that's my own little problem. I'm confessing. Uh, in the name of Christ, you are forgiven. For, uh, offer it back to me, all right? I need it. I need it. Come on, right? Yeah. Glory to God, right? So we know we need patience. But we need to also be patient until the coming of the Lord. That's what James is speaking about. He even says that we should wait wait on this precious crop that Jesus is standing at the door uh, uh, and we should be waiting just like Jesus is standing on the door. Biblical patience then is waiting on God. That's really what we're talking about this morning, that we're waiting on God. Sometimes we don't like that waiting. We, we want God to act and we want God to act right now. We want God to answer our prayer and we want God to answer our prayer right now. We want God to make things right in our world and we want God to make things right right now. But biblical patience is waiting on God. Waiting on God to come again. That's what Romans spoke about. Oh, the whole creation is yearning. And even the first fruits, human beings of that creation, we're eagerly and patiently waiting on God to come again, to create again in us, for God to deliver, for God to harvest. And while we wait... James speaks about what we, how we should live in community together. Verse 9 says, Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Another reference of his coming. There are several references like that in this text. And so we need to hear that this phrase, don't grumble against one another, or you'll be judged, is how we're to live together while we patiently wait. Now, I don't know about you, but this week I kind of reached my level of seeing negativity in the world. One particular day I saw just everything, I, everywhere I looked or heard something on the radio or news or whatever it was, everything seemed to be negative. I'm not singling out any particular one, but every quote or every politician I heard that day was negative. Every one of them. Not one side or the other. Every single one of them. And then I got on Facebook and I saw some of my colleagues in ministry and every post I saw from my colleagues in ministry was negative. And so I made a post that says negativity is like a virus running rampant, kind of compared to, the, to, to COVID. Negativity is like a virus running rampant. And someone joked with me on that post and they said, how do you test positive for negativity? And I said, well, it might be a false positive, right? But James called us not to be grumblers. Grumblers will be judged. The judge is already standing at the door. So James speaks a word to us about being patient. And he further under kind of defines that waiting by speaking about suffering. Verses 10 and 11. Let's go back to those. Brothers and sisters, as an example of patience. Listen to that word. Brothers and sisters, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. So in the face of suffering, be an example. And like the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord, count, as you know, we count as blessed those who persevere. You've heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Reverend Matthew McGraw tells about um, his experience in running in marathons. You're always supposed to give credit in a message to someone when they say something. And and, uh, I always try to do that. But I knew there was no way I was going to come out here and try to say, I've run in a marathon. And that this is my own experience, right? Right? 
I just, I can't take credit for that. Reverend McGraw tells about running in a marathon and how difficult it is at certain points in the race. My brother Chris, a uh, younger brother, Chris has run in some marathons uh, uh, some years ago, and, and he spoke about there's that moment where they hit what they, you call the wall, where mentally you like are hitting a wall and it's hard to go on. And Reverend McGraw was speaking about that particular point, and he said, so there's two things that I do in every marathon or half marathon. He says, the first thing I tell myself is that the race will end. The race will end. Now, it doesn't define when or how, how quickly he's going to cross the finish line or, you know, or whether they're going to carry him over the, the finish line, which is, be, you know, I don't know how many times I'd have to stop and go, you know. But first tell yourself the race is going to end. He said, second, and the most important thing, I focus on the next step. I focus on the next step. It was interesting, the night I found that illustration from Reverend McGraw, McGraw, in my uh, inbox on Facebook came a message from someone I don't usually hear from, someone from my past, and they gave me this little story from Elena Mikhailova. It said, my grandmother once gave me a tip. In difficult times, you move forward in small steps. Do what you have to do, little by little. Don't think about the future or what may happen tomorrow. Wash the dishes, remove the dust, write a letter, make soup. You see, you're advancing step by step. Then Elena, she was speaking to me at this point. Elena Mikolova said, take a step and then stop. Now, the reason it's speaking to me is I thought back to the grocery store. (laughs) I'm going to have to take a step (laughs) and stop. And then take a step and stop. Because I need to focus on just the next step. Rest a little. Praise yourself. Take another step. Then another You won't notice, but your steps will grow more and more, and the time will come when you aren't thinking about the future and crying, but you'll think about the future with hope. In the same way, James is telling us this may be a long race, but know that it will end. But for right now, take another step. You don't know that when the Lord is coming, but you know that the Lord is coming. So right now, take another step. We don't know how long we'll have to endure suffering. But for right now, take another step. So we must first remember this race will end. But right now, we concentrate on taking another step. Three quick things. The Lord is coming, so be patient. The Lord is coming. Be patient like a farmer waits for his crop. Second, our patience should lead us to be uh, friends with God, not, not enemies. Like last week's text, to be friends with the world is to be enemies with God. When we're grumblers, when we're negative, when we're giving up to the ways of the world, then we're not living in friendship with God. So while we patiently wait, we need to live in friendship with God. Lastly, The Lord is coming, and this should lead us to persevere. No matter what, no matter how difficult, no matter how hard, take the next step and persevere the race. Amen? Let's consider our giving and giving our gifts to God. Uh, The offering plate is here, or there's a... uh, Uh, offering box at the backs of the sanctuary if you would uh, take a moment during the offertory and lift up your gifts to God. I 
believe that you are God alone. But sometimes I still try to take control. Cause I get scared when I can't see the end. And all you want from me is to let go. Your parting waters making a way for me. Your moving mountains that I don't even see. You've answered my prayer before I even speak. All you need for me to be is still. I bring my praise before I bring my need Cause there's no fear you've not already seen I rest my heart on all your promises Cause I have seen you know your faithfulness Your parting water remain standing and join me in the great thanksgiving. Um, I know you do not have the hymnals and the words in front of you, but I hope you'll remember much of this, and I'll lead you in it, and those parts you recall in memory, would you please join in. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You may be seated. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism, by his baptism and suffering, death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. 
On the night in which he gave himself up for us, the Lord Jesus took the bread. And after giving you thanks, he broke the bread. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. And again, he returned thanks to you, O God, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Drink from this, all of you. For this is the cup and the new covenant in my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other. Help us, Lord, not to be grumblers, and one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet, through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forevermore. And let us pray together with the words that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Would those who are assisting with communion please come? And while they're coming and getting ready, I'll speak a word about uh, communion. We have communion prepared in um, uh, little condiment cups uh, so that they've been safely sealed. The preparers wore masks and gloves and we've taken every precaution. Uh, we'll invite you to come forward. The communion table is open to anyone seeking a relationship with the Lord. You don't have to be a member of this congregation, simply in relationship with Jesus. The servers will um, take those uh, individualized cups and set them on the table in front of them, and then they will offer you the words of grace. Then you will pick those up and move to the side and uh, safely unmask and partake of those elements and then there's a trash can trash receptacle for you to put the little plastic containers in I would simply ask that you come you can come with those that you've been sitting with or your family but uh, give some space uh, allow the people to to move out in front of you and uh, to remask and then you can can safely come yourself we have some time so we're not in a rush come the table is ready Come receive.
If you'll please stand and join us in our closing hymn, Have Thine Own Way, Lord. So sweet little Laura Malloy this week posted on Facebook and tagged me a picture of the first snowfall at Wolf Creek Ski Area. And then sweet little Jane Wardlaw posted some snowfalls in Creed. I knew she wasn't there, so I wasn't as jealous about that. I went on the Wolf Creek web webcam and the sun was out and whatever had come down was already melted, right? But even if it wasn't, that first dusting of snow wouldn't cover the rocks. It wouldn't cover the little trees sticking up. It wouldn't be enough to ski on. You have to patiently wait for a good 50 or 60 inch base. And so too it is in life. We patiently wait, knowing the end will come. And right now, we take the next step. Amen? Go forth in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.